Over the past year and a half, Miami shattered its real estate records and became the top migration destination for home buyers in the US. It's one of the fastest growing cities in the country, but also one of the most vulnerable to climate change. That's because hurricanes are intensifying, sea levels are rising, and homes in the area are built low, residing mostly on limestone. So city officials are actively looking for solutions. And building a wall? Well, not so fast. Back in August, Miami-Dade County rejected a multi-billion dollar proposal which included up to 20-foot walls. Because while seawalls can provide some protection, they're only part of the puzzle. And in some cases, they can make problems worse. There are a variety of seawalls, but the three main types, curved, vertical, and mound. Curved walls resemble the shape of a wave and are designed to redirect and decrease wave energy, creating less turbulent conditions. Compared with vertical walls, curved seawalls can provide extra protection at the base and prevent overtopping. And mound walls gradually slow incoming waves, minimizing erosion. They've been made from different materials and some of them are very successful and have been durable throughout the, let's say, uh, the history. Like in 2004, when a 300-year-old seawall in Pondicherry, India, kept the city safe from tsunami waves more than 24 feet above high tide. However, as effective as seawalls can be, they still come with a host of problems, including one that may negate their purpose altogether. But let's start out with a simpler issue, cost. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has proposed a number of seawalls for vulnerable cities, each with huge price tags. Like nearly $2 billion for an eight-mile wall in Charleston, $6 billion for a six-mile wall in Miami, and a whopping $119 billion seawall for a six-mile wall that would cover parts of New York and New Jersey. When you start adding on a foot or two to the top of a wall, it gets much, much more expensive. But building higher will continue to be necessary as sea levels continue to rise. In the long run, we cannot stop the Atlantic Ocean. We cannot stop the Pacific Ocean. So what time frame are we looking at is one question. Do we want to spend 10 or 20 billion for the next hurricane? Or should we be looking out a century? Next comes the question of who gets protected, which is one of the main reasons that Miami rejected the latest seawall proposal according to our experts. It only protects the property that's right behind it. So it doesn't protect anything in front of it, which includes all of Miami Beach, Key Biscayne, all these areas that are Watson Island, the cruise ship terminals, everything that sits seaward of that, where that seawall would be. Neighboring Miami Beach is surrounded by approximately 55 miles of seawalls, but nearly all of those are privately owned. Plus, there are environmental concerns. This large 20-foot seawall will be in Biscayne Bay, blocking the natural flow of water in those areas. And we don't have a good understanding of what that'll do to the long-term ecology of the area and the water quality and things like that. But their biggest flaw? Seawalls can amplify negative effects. They don't dissolve wave energy from incoming waves. Waves crash into the seawall, bounce back, and slam into incoming waves creating even more turbulent conditions. So when there is more turbulence, the water can carry more sediments, making a site more susceptible to erosion. Reflection can also create standing waves, which leads to even more base erosion. Erosion at the base of a vertical seawall is called scouring. Scouring is particularly dangerous because it can lead to instability issues and potential failure of the seawall. Another negative? These more turbulent conditions can deflect water around the wall to adjacent unprotected shores, causing accelerated erosion and flooding. And these are realities that Miami and Miami Beach must face when considering a seawall. Much of the county is, is less than a couple meters above sea level. The rocks that underlie the city are limestone and they're very permeable. We are a coastal barrier island. We are right at sea level. Uh, on average, we're about four feet above sea level. Um, so we have a lot to lose. We're highly uh, vulnerable. So if seawalls won't save us, what will? 
Well, it turns out, maybe nature itself. This is the University of Miami's Hybrid Coral Reef Project in partnership with the city of Miami Beach. The research team grows small batches of corals and attaches them to sustainable structures to see the combined effects on wave mitigation. That's because coral reefs, one of the most biodiverse ecosystems, can actually break waves down and decrease their energy. Wave breaking forces are the most significant forces that you can have from the sea. So this is important to understand. In North Carolina, researchers study similar effects from oyster reefs. Regardless of where they are, as the waves hit those reefs, you know, they slow down because there's friction caused by this structurally complex reef. The water has to pass over it. Sometimes a wall is, is the only option. But if you have any real estate to work with, um, you have any natural ecosystems intact or area to restore natural ecosystems, um, often nature is gonna do it a little bit better than, than people. Researchers in Miami are also testing out these hexagonal structures called sea hives. Here's how they work. The wave partially enters into that structure and it interacts with the wave and causes the wave to break down into turbulence and move as it moves into it. It's not just bouncing off, but it's losing energy as it does that. Seawalls, whether concrete or nature-based, are only part of the solution. Miami Beach is preparing for the worst, with plans to construct elevated roadways, implementing stricter building codes, upgrading stormwater systems, and finding ways to make existing property more permeable so water can drain. For example, any new construction must be built higher than FEMA's regulations. As for existing construction, the city has a program focused on green infrastructure, taking cues from New Orleans in particular, which aims for residents to be more prepared in storm events and retrofit their houses. And as for their seawalls? Other seawalls, like as a city, we're just building them as high as possible at this point. So clearly, there's a lot to consider. But experts say that seawalls can still have a positive impact. The seawall has a specific function, and if we use it the right way, it's not a bad structure. There's no such thing as a bad structure. What we need is a portfolio or a series of actions to mitigate these effects in a sustainable way. And with the existential threat of climate change, scientists say a lot of what has to be done relies on us. We have to think about what is the coastline gonna look like in 50 years, and most people don't wanna think beyond the next 10. Being proactive, that would be the great way for all of us to go, but we're a reactive society, so. What are your thoughts on seawalls? Are they worth the price tag? We want to hear in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.